So there's a major flaw that we see when we start to look at athletic development, how athletes are developed across a lifespan in this process, what we consider long-term athletic development. So when we look at this, a lot of times people see sports and they see it through the lens of this is where we are and this is what you know elite sports look like. They see the pros, they see the college athletes and think this is how um, you know, sports should be, right? We have these high performers in a specific thing and they succeed really, really well at their sport and this is how they do it. Well, a lot of times when we look at long-term athletic development, we look at the actual life cycle of an athlete, a lot of people forget that there's three distinct phases. First, we have a pre-sport phase, or basically the phase in time before an athlete really starts to hone in and get really good at a sport. Then we have sport career, and that's actual time an athlete, and what we normally see is athletics, and that's pro sport phase, or being a college athlete, or being even a high level high school athlete, and basically a time frame where an athlete is very specifically in a single sport and putting all their time and effort into being the best, optimizing their performance on the field, court, map, you name it. And then we have a post-sport career phase. So we have this time span after having some of their career and transitioning out of sport. One of the big mistakes people start to make when they start to look at you know, elite athletics is they start to focus on that sport career without acknowledging what needs to happen and what happens during these different phases of that life cycle. Pre-sport career, especially when we start to look at the actual process of becoming an elite athlete, each athlete has this pre-sport career phase that's going to be a time before period or before they really specify in a sport where they need to do a certain number of things or really need to focus on a certain couple of things to really optimize their ability to specify in a sport. A lot of times we look at this pre-sport career, you know, phase of life, we're looking at pre-puberty, all right? And to steal, you know, kind of an example of, you know, how this was developed from David Epstein's book, Rain, we start to look at what's considered a sampling period. When we look at athletes, when we look at just human development from the perspective of long-term and what skills we need to have, being able to develop a wide array of experiences and basically as many different uh, opportunities we can in order to develop athleticism. And this pre-sport career phase becomes really, really important. We're looking at a time frame before puberty, right? From the time you're born to the time you really start developing and growing into an adult and really going through adolescence. We need to understand that there's a huge amount of skill set, both physically and mentally, that we need to be able to develop in order to really succeed. One of the things in a pre-sport phase that we really need to look at is physical literacy, right? Can you skip? to sequence movements in a logical manner and the ability to solve uh, physical problems, right? Elite athletes are just good problem solvers. And one of the things that we look at where you use kind of this idea of a sampling period during this pre-sport phase is being able to have a wide array of experiences, right? This looks like playing different sports. This looks like playing the same sports on different surfaces. This looks at developing, uh, you know, the ability to free play and solve physical problems or rapid problems on one's own. A lot of times, and this is originally the goal of phys ed, was to develop physical literacy in individuals, is being able to understand how your body moves in time and space, being able to move in time and space within constraints, and then being able to use those skill sets to solve unique physical problems, all right? This is a lot of times what we see when we look at elite plays in the Sports Center top 10, is athletes are actually solving physical problems based on a given set of constraints. You know, they make a fake out or a juke on the, you know, an opposing player, or they make some crazy catch in an end zone with toes touching the ground within bounds, and we start to see what's happening, right? Those elite displays of athleticism are realistically just an athlete's ability to solve problems given constraints. And those skills are best developed by developing a wide range of exposure to different tasks and different physical challenges. From a mental side, we need the athletes to be able to identify and be able to respond to different stimuli that surround them, whether that is moving shapes, whether that is different colors, whether that is uh, sights, sounds, right? They need to be able to take the senses, right? Taste, touch, smell, sight, hearing, um, being able to take those senses and being able to combine them into a way that makes sense. Especially when we're looking at adolescents and we're looking at pre-puberty um, and pre-pubescent athletes, their bodies haven't stopped growing yet. And so the best thing that we can do is really start to hone in on some of those general and basically neural skills 
that are gonna play into effect later. When we look at then a sport career and actually focusing in on a sport and optimizing performance within a sport, a couple things are gonna play a factor. One, genetics. He'll forget that genetics plays a huge factor into what sport an athlete is mentally kind of driven towards and also physically driven towards. All right, if you read um, another great book by Epstein, you know, is one, probably one of my favorite authors on the topic, right? We look at the sports gene, you start to see that genetically athletes start to sort themselves into sports. Sometimes it's based on interest, that's also just based on natural ability and natural inclination towards a sport, all right? Most tall people tend to gravitate towards sports like football, basketball, volleyball, um, baseball. These sports tend to favor longer and taller athletes, right? Narrow and very skinny athletes with long limbs tend to be very good at running, all right? If you look at certain different examples, right, the average height of gymnasts over the years has gotten shorter. The average height of basketball players has gotten taller. When we look at how bodies fit into different sports and then even into different positions, they start to take on like this kind of genetic, you know, anatomical structure. A lot of times what we're seeing, and this is what we look at with sport specific and like choosing a sport, is that athletes have a very good opportunity to express their physical and genetic makeup within a certain range of sports. So if we've actually taken care of in this pre-sport phase before specifying in a sport, if we've exposed them to as many different tasks and physical sports or physical activities as we can, we broaden the scope of their experience and that experience allows them to start to identify different sports where they physically and then cognitively fit into best. All right, the great example is eyesight, right? From a physical standpoint, I probably don't fit into a great you know, skill set as a baseball player, but I have one thing that really would make me a terrible baseball player and so I have very poor vision. Right? What most people see at 20 feet, I see at about or 300 feet, I see at about 20 feet, right? That 2300 vision is not great when it comes to having a visual acuity for baseball. It makes me a very poor hitter. All right, from a physical skill set, I'm not terribly far, far off from what would have could have and could have been a good baseball player. However, that one limitation really drove me away from really wanting to specify in baseball. Now, when we look at, you know, creating a wide exposure, being able to have that allows athletes to say, well, if I fit into baseball and football and say soccer, like those are three, you know, genetic makeups where my physical structure could have worked well in, then mental, you know, skills and, you know, personal enjoyment is going to play a factor into what I'd specify it in later. Okay. I'll give you an example, use a personal example. I'm built very much like running back size status, uh, you know, 5'9", 5'10", 200 plus pounds, fairly stocky, fairly lean. I was going to fit into sports that were more dominant and more powerful. Now, that ended up being wrestling in my instance. And that's one of those things where we start to look at sports specific, you know, you know adaptations and sports specific goals. One of the big things we have to look at is what's physically going to work well and what is mentally gonna work well, and how an athlete's personality plays into a factor. And then how we're gonna decide, based on our exposure to different sports, what's really gonna be the best thing to specify in, right? We're trying to take the mental skill set and the mental ability to solve problems, and the physical makeup that we have based on genetics, in order to tailor that and find the best sport fit. A lot of times people specialize pre-puberty into sports that, you know, say they like as a kid, and they fizzle out, they don't optimize their potential in the sport because they've just never been exposed to these different activities. They specialize super, super early. Then we look at post-sport careers. And this is something I think a lot of people don't focus on as much, is what happens when sports are over, right? Inevitably, competitive sport, at least at a certain point, has a peak, and then we have to transition back into either a post-sport lifestyle, you know, for post-collegiate athletes is the end of college career, some this is the end of a high school athletic career. Uh, for some, this is the end of a pro sport career, right? Um, I think a great example right now we see is Tom Brady, who, you know, for lack of a better term, is someone struggling to transition back into civilian life, right? And for some, this could be a military career, right? We see a lot of times the struggles that some military personnel have transitioning out of military back into civilian life. When we look at sport career, it's how do we then take that broad experience from the pre-sport phase of life 
our sport career and then transitioning back to having a general sense, right? Because we build this broad scope of experiences. We really hone in our physical adaptations and really hone in our physical skill sets into one specific thing. And then how do we transition back into a healthy lifestyle and living the rest of our life, both physically and mentally, right? One of the things we have to focus on, especially when athletes are in a sport career as part of this long-term athletic development, one of the things we have to focus on is how can we take our skill set from our sports and then reapply it back to life? How can we take our range of experiences from a well-developed and a well-rounded pre-sport phase of life and how can we transition it out into real-world experience and transition those mental skills and our ability to solve problems and put them back into a real-world experience? Especially when we start to look at post-sport career, some things we have to consider. What were the injuries accrued during the sampling period at pre-sport phase? What are the things that we accrued injury-wise while being in a sport career, really focusing on sport? And what is the reliance on that sport for a sense of identity, right? That's the mental aspect. A lot of times, athletes and people in athletic roles start to tie an identity to their sport um, or to that activity, and they start to then identify with that role. And once that role gets taken away, we need to start to understand how we transition from being in that role back into normal life. Um, a lot of times you hear individuals start to identify themselves with their role or with their sport and transitioning them out of that sense and into a healthy, healthy mental state to be able to have some longevity as this is someone who used to do this or this is someone who um, enjoys this thing. Uh, being able to transition them out of that sport to be able to create a healthy lifestyle long term. So when we look at the broad scope of long-term athletic development, we can't get narrowed down into this, this is what happens to be a great athlete, all right? There's these different phases that happen in an athlete's life that we need to take into account when we start training. We need to account for what skills were or were not learned in a pre-sport phase um, in terms of physical literacy and then the mental skills, being able to identify you know, personal enjoyments and things like that what happened during the sport career and like how they, you know, injuries and mental states during a sport career and then how it transitions into later life and how we transition out of sport into a healthy lifestyle, being able to have physical skill sets and mental skill sets that take us throughout long term. When we look at long term athletic development and actual livelihood of an athlete, this is what we have to consider. And a lot of stuff doesn't consider that anymore. A lot of times we get so focused on the now. We focus on you know specific things, specific things, specific things, and we never end up actually getting to see the actual peak of what an athlete is capable of because we focus so long on a specific thing and that we never built a big base. We never built up the actual capacity to really optimize a sport or even never found the sport they would have been best at. So when we start to look at long-term athletic development, we need to consider these three phases. Pre-sport, or before we specify in a sport itself, we need to consider the sport career itself, and then we need to see what happens and plan and prepare for what happens at the end of a career. If we consider all of those three long, those three phases, we create the best opportunity for long-term athletic development and a long-term you know, setup or uh, process to set them up for success.